Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, it's going to be a very niche um, topic I'm going to be covering. It's going to be to do with Kali NetHunter Pro on the Pine phone. So um, this is going to be to help people who are trying to get it set up. Um, so there is a video out there by David Bumble that goes over um, installing it on the Pine phone. However, this video is going to be for actually getting the apps on there. So what you may notice is after you've installed it on the Pine phone, if you search through the apps, you won't find any of the actual hacking tools in there. So this is to actually, yeah, additional setup is needed basically to actually get the the Kali tools working. I know it's a bit, it doesn't make much sense really that it's not just included when you install it, but this is how it is. So these are the commands that are involved. I'm going to include these in the description of the video. Otherwise, you can just pause it and uh, do them yourself. Um, otherwise, I will now go over actually going through this on the Python myself so you can follow along. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so this is the Pine phone, literally just as you've installed um, Kali onto it. So this is the login screen. I'll press Kali, which is just a user account, and one, two, three, four is going to be the unlock code. Now this also works as the password whenever you want to do sudo commands. So. I'll just let this load up a bit. Um, there will be a little bit of initial setup you'll need to do, so that means connecting it to the Wi-Fi, setting date and time to automatic, so it'll pick it up from the network. I'm also going to do a little personal touch, which is to um, turn off haptic feedback on the keyboard because I just don't like it when it keeps on vibrating. So, um, let me connect to the Wi-Fi first of all. I won't need to show you how to do that. You can do that for yourself. I'll show you about turning on some other bits I like to optimise and then we'll go through actually getting the apps for Kali. Okay, so I've now connected it to the network. Um, I'm also just going to turn off Bluetooth. This is just because, again, I'm not going to be using it, so save the power. Um, let us also turn on the showing percentage of the battery just so it shows it up there. Um, I just like it to show that because um, personal preference, really. It means... Um, so if we just scroll down a bit here, it says show battery percentage. Let's turn that on. And now you'll see up in the top right, you that will show up there. Just means that you don't get into any situations where it's going to run out of power in the middle of something. Um, as for the rest of it, uh, we do date and time. So if I go to, let's just find it, date and time. There we go, near the bottom. Now, this is the Pine phone, so it does take a bit of time to do some stuff, and then we do automatic date and time there. So now we shall see, yep, yeah, it's already gone to the right time, so that's all good. Um, now, that one final thing as well is going to be turning off haptic feedback on the keyboard, so let me just pause while I get it ready, and then, uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, so this is the command that you want to type. So it's g setting set org dot sigx cpu dot feedback d space profile space silent. And now if I do the enter on that and then start typing, it's no longer vibrating. So that's exactly what I want. So I just made it a little bit less annoying when I'm typing loads of these commands out. So let us get started then. So we've connected to the network, we've set the date and time, done the show and battery percentage just as a personal preference. So, now just to say a bit of time with the other commands that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to do sudo, which just means super use do, and then um, hyphen i, and what that means is any subsequent commands will be run as sudo automatically, so I don't need to keep on specifying sudo each time. I'm going to ask the password, so that's me 1234, so if I put that in there, and now we are basically running as super user for all these rest of these commands. So, first thing we want to do is apt update or it would be sudo apt update if we were not running as sudo already so apt update enter and now that's just going to update that again just going to pause it while that runs so we've done the apt update that just means it's updated the list of possible updates for the apps on this um, running uh, linux distribution apt upgrade is actually going to apply any updates that are outstanding so that just means we're going to be running on the most up-to-date version of the current software. I'm just going to say yes to this, which is just going to apply the updates. 
Again, I'm just going to pause it while that does. Okay, the upgrade command has been done. So next, what I'm going to do is install a tech a command line, command line based text editor. Um, there are a few you can use. You could use Nano, Vim. I'm going to use Vim just because. I mean, other ones some. Some Linux users look down on others that don't use Vim. They see Vim as like the uh, the holy one. So here we go. Let's do it. So apt install Vim. So here we go. It's going to install Vim, and then we're going to once that's done, um, use it to edit the sources dot list file. So I'm just going to pause while that does it. Okay, Vim has been installed, and now this is the command to actually edit the sources.list file. So Vim space forward slash etc forward slash apt forward slash sources.list. If I do enter, it's going to load into that actual file itself. Here we go. So what we want to do then is we want to add in the bit just before non-free, we want to add um, another line, well, another bit of entry that says non hyphen free so if I were to find the right bit again I'm just using these arrow keys here on the the virtual arrow keys so I'm going to type non hyphen free except I'm uh, typing that in the wrong bit let me just try going up there again a bit of a noob myself so uh, that's why I'm uh, <laughs> struggling a bit so let's just make sure. So, me contrib. I've spelt that wrong. Let me try that one more time. There we go. That looks right. Okay. So, okay. So I was doing it right. So what you want to do then is the escape key, then colon. So there's the colon, and then X, which will save and exit, and then enter. Now there we go. In theory, then that should have um, allowed the um, the sources list to update. Oh, I see. Yep. No, my mistake. I've, I know what I've done. Um, I didn't need to uncomment that thing. What I needed to do was apt update. So if we do that and then try again, I believe it should work. So let me just pause this while it does it. One more time. Yep, that's looking better. Yep, so what you need to do then is after you update the sources.list file with that non-free part, you just need to do a apt update and then it should download. So now then it's going to take a long time to actually do the download. So um, I'd say typically if you check back in 10 minutes or so, it will give you a prompt to, um, to say what do you want a few things configured a certain way. So I'll uh, pause the video and then we'll come back to it after it's got to that part. One other thing as well, at this point it's wise to have the phone plugged in, so I've got this plugged in to a power anyway. Um, otherwise, because it's going to be taking quite a while, you don't want it to run out, because that could be bad. Okay, so here we've got to a point where in the installation it's now prompting you to ask, well it's asking for some questions. So this is to do with Kismet, which is one of the tools. It's basically just saying um, something about how it's going to be using privileges and uh, in system instability. Basically, I'll read through it. Um, it's only given us the option to exit, so I'll just click enter to that. It's going to say install it as root. I'm just going to say yes. Again, this is a Pi phone, so playing around with. I'd say if you're concerned more about system stability, maybe you're going to be using this for other things rather than just playing around with you might say no and that would be a bit more um, like uh, what they'd recommend I'd say because it would then not make it root it'd make it like some special separate security group a bit more difficult to manage but if you want to do it right that's probably the best way to go now this is going to be saying something like um, blah blah, blah. Oh, okay. So this is just asking. Okay, so I must have said it as a um, as an individual group, and in that case, the user to add is going to be Carly. So that's um, all in lower case because that's the user. Change up Mac automatically. That's um, a bit like if you think um, with your regular smartphone when it connects to a network, 
it changes MAC address automatically by default with a part of security. I'm just going to say no to that because if I'm troubleshooting, I'd want to know the actual MAC address of the device. Now, this is going to be saying, um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so I'm just going to leave that as. Now I'm just going to leave that as root. So let's just do that's fine. And now that's just going to continue installing at this point. So I will uh, check in once that's done. Okay, so it's the installation is now done. It took quite a long time as you can see. So at this point I will be exited out of this and then doing a reboot. So the best way to reboot for Kali is to actually just power it off completely and then power it on again. So just to make sure, so um, when you do go back into Kali, you want to make sure that you're holding down the power but button and the volume down. So then, once you power it on, keep on holding down volume down. That'll make sure it boots from the SD card rather than the main um, phone memory. So yeah, all right. I'll pause it and then we'll uh, come back and see what it's like after you boot it back into it. Now, when you do boot back in, it will be into a desktop environment. That's just the way Kali is with its, yeah, the Net Under Pro um, suite is still experimental, which is why it's not still immediately optimised for the Pine phone. You have to go in, change the um, interface back to a phone interface, and then reboot it again. So yeah, we'll go through that in a minute. Alright, so when you boot up the Pine phone after you've installed the Kali Linux Tools um, app suite, um, you'll see this screen. So this is the desktop environment. So as you can see, it's not. Yeah, it's just a tiny desktop login screen. There is an option to use non-screen keyboard to do the login, but the problem is after that point, you will need a keyboard to do the rest of it. This um, interface is not designed for touch screen, and you can't get on-screen keyboard once you've, si you've signed in. So I have here a USB A hub which has a USB-C connector on it so I'm going to connect that to the Pine phone and then I have a USB keyboard um, which you can see here um, so yeah I'm going to get that all hooked up and then we will be back okay the keyboard is now hooked up so I'm going to be typing in to sign in so um, you can use the tab key on the keyboard to switch between these fields as well so that's a pro tip although you might know that already if you're watching the next video. So Carly is the username, of course, all our case, and the password is one two three four. And then it will now sign in. It does take about half a minute or so to sign in. Um, so I'm going to pause it here, and then I'll come back once it's loaded up. Okay, so once it's loaded in, you'll see that the background has changed. Um, also at the top you will see there is a little sort of navigation bar. If you can see how big my finger is though, it is tiny. However, you can still use it. So, if I were to click this little button, it's like the little start button, um, and you can see it opens up the applications. Now you can open up Terminal Emulator. It's a tiny, but you can select it. You can see an absolutely tiny cursor as well. Um, it's kind of cute actually. Um, but yeah, so now we've opened up a terminal window there's two commands that we need to do to basically disable the desktop interface and then re-enable the phone interface. So the first command is sudo systemctl or systemctl disable lightdm and lightdm is just the name of the desktop environment that it's currently using so it's struggling to focus but if I do that it's going to ask for the password which is one two three four again let's let that do and then if we press the up arrow on the keyboard that will just put us into the previous command and then I'll just do enable fosh instead of disable like DM so enable fosh and fosh of course is the name of the phone interface for um, the Pine phone now that's done, we can close out of here and then reboot the phone again. So if I select, so if I were to just try it again actually, 
if I do escape. So you see top right of the screen there's that little option to um, this actually gives you the option to re restart. I'm actually going to do shutdown because again when you're booting into Kali you want to have the volume rocker down so it boots from the SD card. So I'm going to shut this down and then um, once it's booted up I will show you that you can see the actual Kali apps at that point. Okay so Kali X is booted up again so if we sign in one two three four and so initially it may look the same however if we do show all apps you should see all of the proper Kali apps now so you can see yep that door better cap all of these ones that you'd expect to see are there now so yeah netcat um, nmap you got all of them so yep you now have a fully fledged Kali phone so hopefully you found this useful and yeah there we go